These are my Behringer MS-40 studio monitors that my mom bought for me when I went off to music school, and now they sit by my TV. These are my Tannoy Gold 7 studio monitors. They have this presumably really important sound nipple thing in the center, and I honestly forgot I still had these, so I should probably sell them. These are my III wired or wireless closed back studio headphones. And these things here are my Austrian Audio HIX65 mastering headphones that sound absolutely incredible. These are some Bluetooth earbud things that I take to the gym with me. This is a party speaker thing I apparently bought at some point, and we call it Bob. And then there's these bad boys, my Atom Audio S2Vs with matching sub that sound way nicer than I ever deserve to hear anything. It would be no exaggeration for me to say, when it comes to mixing, I have accumulated several thousand dollars worth of ways of listening to things in my house and studio. And yet, this is the one I prefer. It's tiny, it's gray, I think I paid about $8 for it at a gas station or something, and it sounds like absolute shit. But it beats all the rest of these for me combined. Hold on, I can explain. Uh, before I dropped out of music school, I learned three very important life lessons. One, the whole apple and pen thing does work if you need to smoke out in a pinch. Two, your friend with a beard won't get carded as often. And three, mixing on really exceptionally shitty reference systems is one of, if not the only, hacks out there to legitimately make you a better producer. As musicians of the modern age and our endless pursuit to become Daniel X next victim in the late stage big tech capitalist hellscape that is the music industry, sometimes it's easy for us to forget the fact that our audiences are dumb and don't necessarily listen to things the way we intend for them to be listened to. And this isn't really their fault, it's just that they don't really have all the cool gear that we do. And unfortunately, they don't usually know any better. I'm sure it comes as no surprise to learn, especially if you've watched this channel for any length of time, that my IQ tends to firmly plant itself somewhere in those all too comfortable double digits. And up until this point, I had not considered this reality in my illustrious career as a 17 year old musician dipshit. And this is why it was really surprising when I walked into the studio room at my school and found my production teacher sitting in front of a Trident console with, I don't know, $80,000 worth of monitoring around him, mixing a song on first generation iPod headphones. And I'm I'm not talking about those cool AirPods we have today, kids. No, no, no. This is back when shit had wires on it. And just like Seinfeld, I needed to know, what's the deal with that? This idea of using bad playback systems for mixing isn't really anything new. I mean, the Yamaha NS10s are some of the most well-regarded monitors of all time because they're so gross and revealing in the mid-range. And arguably even more iconic would be something like the old Oratone 5Cs, which are known for sounding like hot ass. While I'd love to have multiple different speakers and reference systems up here in my studio, I'm missing two very critical things to make that happen, space and money. And I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you probably are too, which is why I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the mystical powers of my special friend, the magic shitbox. There are pieces of software that you can use to do similar things here. Personally, I use Sound ID Reference in a calibrated room, and this works well enough, but it's just not quite the same as listening to music on a good old-fashioned piece of garbage. Now, while you might be tempted to go out and grab one of these here party speaker things, because it's got more speakers and a cool little bass boost button, and this is something you would reasonably expect an average listener to listen to music on, the problem is, it actually sounds all right, and that's the complete opposite of what we're looking for. What makes the little shitbox here so special is a couple key factors. First up, it only has one speaker. It doesn't have any kind of crossover or a separate woofer and tweeter, so all the frequencies are forced to come out just this one speaker. Point number two, it only has one speaker. We're not gonna be able to hear anything in stereo, so this is gonna force everything down to mono. Point three, it has an aux input. This way, you could plug your shitbox directly into the headphone jack of your audio interface. But if it's a quarter inch output, you might need an adapter to get it down to an eighth inch. Number four, it sounds like garbage. 
Big super hi-fi full band playback systems are great, but it's not what we're really after. We're after the most composite average piece of junk that we can hear our music on. If you have the ability to test these out in a store, you really want to look for one that tends to maybe even distort a little bit if you really push it super hard. As I sit here editing this, I'm now realizing it would probably be smart for me to jump in here and just quickly emphasize that you don't need to go out and try and find this specific speaker before people ask me in the comments about it or what it is. I honestly don't know. The brand name is On, and it says it's from 2015. I think I maybe bought this at a gas station or a Walmart or something, but realistically, if you go out to your local dollar store or bait and tackle shop or wherever you do your fine electronic shopping, any of these little generic hockey puck speakers are probably gonna do the same job just as well. The nice thing about this setup is you can leave your studio monitors intact and when you wanna flip over to your little shit box speaker, you can simply mute your monitors and turn up the headphones. And while it's not a lot of fun, it does make your mix sound like this. The goal with these crappy speakers isn't really to blow your mind with their insane sonic quality, obviously. The goal is really just to exaggerate and emphasize the things you're not typically drawn to listening to in a mix, because we are severely limiting the band range, forcing things to come out only one speaker, and we're forcing things down to mono, we're getting a pretty ugly and clear look at what's happening. And not only is this helpful for mixing to make sure things aren't overlapping and competing or getting weird when we send them down to mono, but also for arrangement. It's a really good test of can you clearly and distinctly pick out what is going on and does it serve an actual purpose in the song? And that's really why these things are so special and why I think this trick is so effective. One of the best things about this is integrating this into your setup isn't really all that hard. I just leave it in the little side pocket of my desk and I go about my mix sessions as usual. Then whenever I'm ready to pull things down to check on my reference speaker, I can pull it out of my desk, hook it up to my interface's headphone jack, and away I go. This is really where all the critical listening gets done, not only for competing frequencies, but competing instruments, any other arrangement tricks I can pull out, and anything that tends to be revealed by being so unflatteringly put forward with all its meat and taters hanging out for all to see. If you do happen to have one of those other Bluetooth speakers that I showed earlier that has the big bass boost and whatever, this can also be a pretty useful tool to check against as a second reference, and these really exaggerated toy-ish speakers like this I think tend to do actually a pretty good job of approximating something like the car test. Because many of these also only have one speaker set, you do get the benefit of a mono mix, you just get a little more bandwidth and a little more exaggeration on all the fun frequencies. If for some reason you can't get a hold of one of these speakers, or you can't afford it or whatever, you can also recreate a relatively okay approximation of this test for free. One of the tricks my production teacher taught me early on was to create an EQ on the master bus and cut everything below about 300 hertz and everything above about 3k. Then you can use a stereo imaging tool to collapse everything to mono, and this gives you kind of a rough version of this test by isolating out just the really aggressive mid-range frequencies and putting everything in mono, making you hear all the stuff that you don't normally pick up on. Like I mentioned earlier, this isn't quite the same as getting one of these crappy speakers to really test this on because you're still dealing with crossovers and different things like that in most cases, but in a pinch, this also works pretty well. As much as I'm sure it would infuriate many of my clients to learn, everything I do gets run through this as my final mix check. Unless it passes this test, it does not go out the door. And that's the same for sample packs and stuff I've done for Splice and Loop Masters and whatever. It's the same for movie trailer sound effect libraries, library music, film and game scores, and anything else. It does not go out the door until it goes through this, and I give it the stamp of good enough, I guess. And that's really the proof in the pudding here, because if it sounds good on this, it's sounds fucking fantastic on anything else, because the real magic of this is, nothing sounds worse than the magic shitbox. If you enjoyed that video and you want more videos like it, you could support this channel by hanging out with me and telling me what you had for dinner by joining my Discord, or you could check out any of my free Decent Sampler instruments that run in the free Decent Sampler plugin. Or you could become a patron and buy me a coffee so I can survive my way through editing another one of these damn videos. Or you know what, you could just, you could just go out there and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Videos are probably going to be slow for a little bit, and I'm excited to tell you why in a future video. But for now, that's it. Bye. <laughs>